Welcome to lesson 2 of volume 3 engineering. We will now go to 2D structural. Here is where you saved Lesson 1 to the Architectural. Let's copy that layout file that we just made, the Box House Architectural. So Control C and go to our Lesson 2, Control V. Let's rename this into Box House Structural. So just click once to rename and let's call it Box House Structural. Now make sure the dot layout is still there because that is the file extension. Let's open box house structural and proceed to engineering. Layout for structural documents. Once you have opened box house structural, let's delete the pages that we do not need for our structural. Open pages. Delete the first page. Keep this second page, keep the third page, delete the rest. Basically, we're going to keep all the plan views for our framing plans and our foundation plan. Let us start our foundation plan by converting these for structural layout. First, when we zoom in, we can see that the lines are jagged and pixelated because they are on raster mode. So click on that and then go to the right and see SketchUp model. In SketchUp model, look at the viewport and raster. Click on raster and change this to vector. So that makes all of our lines straight but does not show any pattern or texture. We can do that as well here, but be careful not to use this style tool anymore because it not only updates the line type, but as well as the scene. So better just click it and turn it to vector again. You can also select both of them and click on vector. No problem. If you notice that your layout is kind of laggy, go to File, Document Setup, Paper, and make the display resolution low. So that the things we see right now are not really rendered well, but when we go for printing, we can make them high again. Let's first change the titles. Let's call this the foundation with first floor framing plan. Since I have an auto text here following the page name, I can just go to pages and change this to floor framing plan. I should also change the letter A to S to indicate this is part of the structural document. I'll do the same thing here, but instead of just editing this, I can choose to copy this and just rename. This is the second drawing. And remember, the scale of our floor plan that we forgot to edit a while ago is 1 is to 75 meters. In our layer tray, the layers we used in SketchUp layout architectural a while ago are imported here. So we don't need the text labels yet. We can delete this. We don't need the tags of doors and windows as well. We could delete that. 
we really need this column grid so let it stay there dimensions we don't need that for now so instead of deleting the whole layer we might need to put dimensions later right click and select entities and just delete those delete of course we will not be needing the full floor plan for now but we need to locate our columns and that's where we will start our first layer layer one which is column s dash column just so that we can see it with the other layout organization later that this is part of structural inside the column layer let's start our scale drawing the scale drawing can be done by placing the scale first make scale drawing choosing the scale let's say 1 is to 100 and choosing the units meters you can use your basic drawing tools such as the line rectangle and circle to draw inside this group that is already scaled 1 is to 100 say this rectangle instead of just drawing it freely we can actually put in dimensions in meters so click once let's say three by three that is three comma three which you can see down there Just press enter so that when we try to measure this later on it actually has information on the distance as compared to drawing outside this scale drawing It will not get to the same dimensions, but more of the dimensions of the paper in meters. Let's say in case we drew outside and forgot to make the scale drawing. That's not a problem. What you can do is just select that drawing and put a scale to it. So choose scale 1 is to 100. You will see that the dimensions automatically get converted to a scale of 1 is to 100 as well as this drawing. So that is for scale drawings. Inside the column layer let's start our scale drawing. Using the rectangle tool, I know that my column is 0.3 comma 0.3. Enter. The problem there is that we did not put the scale. So let's do it again. Make scale drawing. Choose scale. 1 is to 75. Rectangle. 0.3 comma 0.3. Enter. Now we have a 30 by 30 centimeter column regardless of how it's laid out here on the floor plan. I know that we're still inside the group or the scaled group, so I could make a copy for the other columns as well. Once your column is done, we can now proceed to the beams. Open layers and add the S dash beam. Do the same thing, make a scale drawing, one is to 75, and put a rectangle from end to end. If you notice, the middle column has been covered, but no worries because we will place this beam below the column later on. Assuming that our beam has a 30 centimeter width, we can just lock it with the column instead. In cases where you want to take control of the dimension of the beam, you can scale it inside, hold down Alt to do it both ways, or actually type in the dimension by going 0.2 comma 0.2 for a 2020 beam. Lock it to the middle and scale it from there. 
it is your discretion and how you want to get that dimension of 2020. Afterwards, we can place the beam layer right below the column layer. So just drag below column and release. If you could see, our columns are on top and our beams are below. Let's make the column shape with a bigger profile, so two points. Oh, forgot a beam here. All right. And then we can proceed to our footing. This time we can arrange the footing layer below the beam so we don't have to edit it later on. S-footing. We can start drawing the footing here by making the column as reference. However, since it cannot be seen, we turn off the visibility. So it's up to you whether to use the visibility off first, then draw, or like we did a while ago, draw first, then arrange the layers later. Since this is not to scale, remember, we can make it a scale drawing by just clicking on make scaled, one is to 75. By starting in the middle, I can input the radius, let's say one meter, to make it a two meter width on both sides. You can choose to have this as different groups but personally, I'd go inside the scale group and lay it out from there. If you want to snap this in a specific place, let's say this upper corner to this upper corner, just make sure the hand is shown and drag the pinpoint there. This way, when you drag it here, it will lock to any object that it can snap on. Let's say we can change our mind and make this a combined footing. So just drag that there and delete this one. Do the same for the others. Now we're done with our footing. Let's say we want it to have a dashed line. So go to shape style, dash, and we can make the stroke weight a little thinner, 0.6, so that when we turn on the other components of our structural drawing, it will look like this. You can even go as far as making your beams have patterns in Pattern Fill. Go to Pattern Fill, choose a material symbol, uh, let's say this concrete masonry unit and make the scale a little smaller. This is up to your own discretion on how you want to present the foundation plan. Because right afterwards, we're going to disable this, if not delete it. The only time you should delete this is if you feel that layout lags too much because of the size of your SketchUp model. That's why in this SketchUp model, I did not place any 3D furniture. Only the things needed right now for our structural layout. Currently, our SketchUp model is in default. We can choose to make a new layer for that. Let's call it dash dash SketchUp. This dash dash makes it easier to find major components here inside the layer. And maybe I can make this into a dash dash layout. So I can choose to bring this above. With this layering system, I can have the SketchUp scene on the lowest portion, the structural drawings right above it, 
and any annotations on the topmost part. So I will be using the dash dash SketchUp as an indication and dash dash layout for later on, such as drawings that I don't have any layers for. Or once these SketchUp scenes are inside SketchUp layer, I can just turn that layer off and lock it. Now I have my foundation with first floor framing, so that means I need to put slab details here. For our foundation with floor framing, we're basically done with the foundation. Let's proceed to our floor framing. The pattern tool is a very nice tool in order to show a kind of hatch. Let's say this rigid insulation or grating. Then by placing a rectangle, we can show this as just a symbol for some rebars. And we can even place concrete right above it. However, since these are images and they are not to scale, we can make callouts instead. For this callout, our stroke is disabled, so we have to enable it. And then click once. You can label this later on as 10 mm bars spaced at equally both ways or whichever your specification is. But right now we will focus on the drawing first. Currently, this is in layer layout, so we won't have to keep on placing too much layers. So we actually have a scrapbook for structural as well. We have the same column grid. We also have these kinds of columns and beams. It's already in a scaled group. One is to a hundred. So all you can do if you don't like to place this in layers, just edit them inside. And once you're done editing, just arrange this, bring to front, so that it stays on top of the beams. We also have some labels for this, such as this one. Say a slab on fill, thickness of the slab will be 100 millimeters or 10 centimeters, 12 mm bars spaced at 250 millimeters on center both ways, and the page number will be S1. So, this is not a tricky thing to do. You have to consult the structural engineer on what to place here, okay? Let's say, example, slab on fill or a thickness for the slab, let's say, is 150 millimeters, that's 15 centimeters or six inches. And the question is what kind of bars will you like to reinforce inside the concrete? So you can place rebar or temp bar, or let's say reinforced with 12 millimeter. Oh, since this is a slab, let's try 10 millimeter temperature bars spaced at so what will be the spacing of each bar well, let's say they're spaced one foot each that's 30 centimeters or 300 millimeters on center that's the oc a while ago that's from they're going to measure that from the center of the bar diameter and then spaced 300 millimeters equally on center both ways this means it's going vertically and horizontally in plan view both ways okay so basically these things written here are instructions to the contractor 
the site supervisor and for the foreman to follow on site. This is also needed for estimates. So what you did is make a call out here instead of drawing them one by one. However, if you choose to do that, just use the scale drawing. But of course, that will take a lot of time as well. And this not might this might not even be accurate based on the image or the pattern fill. So in that case, you can just copy this and put a call out for this call out. It means look at drawing number two in page S one. Okay, since we are in page S1, let's say the details will be on page 3. I just added this to S3. So for details on this slab section, please go to drawing number 2 on page structural 3. Same thing here. As well as the floor framing. So you can just copy that to the other side. All right, now because we see some slab extending there, we have to place some wall footing, or in your case, specify if it should be a grade beam as well, as well as here, your cantilever beams and your edge beam. So let's go to that detail right now. 